Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com, coming at you with a full case break of the brand new 2023 Topps Pristine Baseball 8 box. Uh, pick your team number two from jazbeescasebreaks.com. All cards ship. You remember the pristine with the uh, with the packs on packs on packs? That's what we got going on here. Big thanks to this group for making it happen. Appreciate it. Thanks for getting in. No fillers. We just did this straight up, which I appreciate. And it was Michael with Last Spot Mojo with the Rays. All right, kind of, this kind of unwieldy, awkward sized case is over here. This we're going to do tomorrow. That's the luminance. This is our last break of the night, boys and girls. This does take a little bit of time. Um, and Jason is going to need this for recaps from the other stream. I think everyone can see this case happening on my face camera right here. One, two, three, four. What you guys think I said? Oh, take a pick. I think you said one. Just some extra packaging paper right there, empty box. Thanks, everybody. So we were talking a little bit about licensing before this. That's obviously can't avoid that topic around the hobby. Yeah, what are the implications of? Well, they're already they're they're already in some kind of lawsuit. Uh, Fanatics and Panini are battling in, in courts already. Probably a Delaware court, yeah. Um, so there's already that, and I'm sure there's some public information there. The it seems to me that you know fanatics had somehow convinced the NFL Players Association, the union, to terminate their licensing agreement with the early, a few years, a couple years early, a few years early, something like that. What are the implications of that? I don't know. Uh, obviously, we can only speculate. I suppose something would have to do with whether the money was paid up front or not. I doubt the money was paid up front, so. Um, so I, I would imagine that, I guess Panini just doesn't have to pay the remainder of the licensing fee, whatever it was, divided by however, however many years it was, however that was negotiated. I guess something in the contract must have also stipulated or suggested that they could, that the NFLPA could do that without legal ramification. Otherwise, they probably wouldn't do it. So they must, they must have had an out. Or maybe there was like a, someone made this joke last night, like a, like a mobile carrier. Maybe there was an early termination fee. <laughs> Perhaps there was something in the language there, so. It would be interesting to see how this world works. Like, what's the, what's the secret world of, of, uh, of bidding for a license, a license for anything, like. You know, is. I don't know if there's like a legal requirement to, to, to make bids public so there could be a bidding war or whatever. You know, I suppose it's like a company that can accept whatever contractor they want to work with. Are they required to, some companies require to get multiple bids, but maybe the NFLPA was just like, nah, we like this deal. We'll go with it. Maybe they're not subject to those uh, requirements. Ooh, nice Mike Trout. Oh, snap! Die cut. Goes to Kenneth and the Angels. There's a chance that those can be autographed, too. I think I might have seen one down there. I don't know if it's autographed or not. We'll find out. 
So we'll see what happens. Right now, it's all just what we're doing, just speculating, guessing what's going to happen. You know, we don't know, you know, what, there's a nice 18 out of 25 swings of summer. Fernando Tatis Jr., that goes to Walter and the Padres. So yeah, the licensing world is, uh, is interesting. Well, how do the bids for TV licenses work? You know, that I don't know either. It's, you know, is, is, it, is, it, is it in the NFL's best interest to put, it, put a bidding, like put an auction out there somehow? There's David Bednar for the Pirates 99. There's Teoscar Hernandez for the Mariners, that's to 75. Brandon Crawford to 50. And then behind Jonathan India is Jersey and Auto Corbin Burns around the diamond Jersey and Auto. Nice one for the Brew Crew, Brian K. Brian with the Brewers. Breaking news, John, saying Elon Musk just bought Panini and then renamed it X, Panini X. 50 out of 50, Corey Seager for the Rangers. We got Framber Valdez for the Astros. That'll be for Howard. We got a Kyle Stowers rookie autograph for Tristan and the Orioles. 72 out of 75, Tristan. We got another blue, Nestor Cortez to 75 for the Yankees. It's going to be for Russell. We got, this is also for you, Russ, Mariano Rivera. And a Ronald Acuna Jr. Oh, snap! Die cut autograph. Matt Lieber with that one. So was box one, box two. Eric Houston always thought Under Armour would get NFL for uniforms. Who is it now? Do they do each team? Does each team officially negotiate their jersey licenses, or is it league wide? Or did Nike buy like the league wide rights to design all the jerseys for all the teams? that there aren't more cards so because sometimes the card can slip down here and then the crimping machine will come and crimp that and catch some cards in there I'm surprised at that I'm I, this is only my second case but maybe it had happened breaking news Elon Musk just bought an Under Armour logo will remain unchanged it'll just be under X Twitter X, SpaceX, Under X, Tesla X. Uh, 
There's Aaron Judge, oh snap die cut for the Yankees. That'll be for us three homers tonight. You know, Elon, I don't know what's going on with this, but Elon was supposed to build uh, what he called, I don't know if people remember this, what he called hyper tunnels here in Los Angeles. I think he got, you know, I, I think it's kind of happening. There's D.L. Hall, purple, Byron Bucks and gold. And Hideki Matsui Blue for Russell, and the, uh, that's the 75. Buxton for the Twins will go to Nestor. D.L. Hall to 99. Well, it, I, th I think there is, I think a mile of tunnel has been built. I don't think it goes anywhere, though. I think it's just for testing. And around the diamond, Jersey and Auto, Barry Larkin. Nice one for Michael and the Reds, Michael S. Right, it's called, right, it's, it's a clever name, The Boring Company. But it was supposed to, he had a number of, yeah, I think he had one, an idea for one underneath the strip in Vegas to move people around. His idea for L.A. was to have a hyperloop to, like, Dodger Stadium to downtown L.A. to get people, people there. Corbin Burns to 75, I, which I thought was actually a very interesting idea, but they just never keep, I don't know where it's at right now. Juan Gonzalez, George Kirby. Nice autograph for the Mariners, Matt Lieber. And we got Tony Gonsolin for my Dodgers. Three out of 15, rough season for Tony. Just been battling injuries all year long. Ed P with my Dodgers. We got Jock Peterson, former Dodger for the Giants. That's gonna go to Ada. And for the Fish, Sandy Alcantara. That's right, Eric, you got it. It's a play, play on words. The one in Vegas was functioning, I thought. No, none of those are functioning. They buried the business plan, nice one. They got bored. Elon got bored with a boring company. No, I think as far as, as far as, uh, I think they'd have some, ta but they, they haven't even figured out how they want to do, originally, it was supposed to be all cars will, will float on this platform that'll shoot you through this loop. I was maybe magnetized. Then it, then they, then, then I think they found that it was too expensive, and so now it's only, only Teslas on a, pre, following a predetermined path, electronically or magnetically or whatever that'll, that'll shoot the car through this loop to your final destination or something like that. Which obviously, oh, maybe was it autonomous Teslas? Maybe it was autonomous ones that'll that'll let you shoot through there. But ultimately, that kind of defeats the purpose of some sort of public transportation because it's not it's only for Tesla owners, <laughs> not for the public. So I'm not sure. Oh boy, Duncan, it is way too early for come on Rockies. Give me something here. We are one, two, three, four, five, seven boxes away. We're only, you know, we, we got a ways to go. We got 45 minutes, 45 more minutes left. Got to play to the whistle. You got, you can start worrying when we're around here. Oh, oh, oh you're, you're saying you got a feeling for something. Here. There's a link. Well, you can't drop links in the chat. I mean, I don't think it's, I don't think the public can use it though. I think there are many videos, even, even of the, the track, the loop in LA, where, which has, which they've been testing. 
but no one, no, no one from the public can actually use it. I think that should go for the same in the one in Vegas. They do need a train from Vegas. They are building one. A company called Brightline, I want to say, that built a built a high-speed rail that's connecting places in um, in Florida and somewhere along the eastern seaboard. But they are building it. It's Chris Bryant, die cut for the Rockies. No, it's it's us, Eric Houston. You're all right for now. But the Vegas to LA train technically won't start in LA. But you could get to it by public transportation. There's Michael Harris 25. Basically, you can take the metro link to wherever this high speed rail station is going to be in San Bernardino. And then I think it's going to cut across the desert behind the Cajon Pass and fire across the desert and then end up going down the median of the 15 all the way to, I think I found out where the, the station is supposed to be, the terminus on the Vegas side will be in some empty lot across the street from the mall near, near the airport. I think like the south outlets or something like that. I go to the movie theaters there when, 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 I'm, when I'm out there. Yeah, the Las Vegas South Premium Outlets to the, to the west of Las Vegas Boulevard, there's just a bunch of empty, just tons of empty space there. I think that's where they're building the terminus. It's Matthew Libertor. Kyle Tucker blue to 75. I think if all if all goes according to plan, it should be done by 2027, 2028 around there. It's Ezekiel Tovar 25, Duncan in the Rockies. And there's Oswald Peraza. I'm pretty sure was it him? I think he got called up recently. He's one of their highly touted prospects. They got an Oswald and an Oswaldo or a Oswald. Uh, some two guys with similar names. Out of 50, that goes to Russ and the Yankees. Tyler O'Neill, Cardinals. It's going to be for Frank. We got Jordan Alvarez. Going, going, gone autograph. 35 out of 75. Did he... Did I overhear on MLB Network that he went going, going, gone? Or no, I think it was Adam Duvall maybe who went going, going, gone. Anyway. And we got Francisco Alvarez to 15. Nice. That goes to Howard and the Mets. Juan Soto for the Padres. That's for Walter. Nice Corey Seager for Texas. That'll be for Jeremy. Jeremy Olson with that one. And we got a Jose Ramirez orange to 25. Nice. Um, let me do a recap a little bit later, but I need to build myself a little room there. Uh, Duncan, is the farm system in baseball like your second string player in rookies? No. It's, uh, it's more, think of it as an academy in soccer terms. Matt Lieber has the Braves. So you can consider the farm system in America is like an academy or a developmental league or something like that. Yeah. 
Although sometimes they'll use it if like some if, if a regular gets injured and they need they need him to get some starts. Yeah, I got you. I, I got Google in my brain right here, Duncan. But yeah, sometimes they'll send guys who are injured that they need a couple rehab starts or something like that. I guess sometimes they'll do that with with uh, with first team players in soccer, right? They'll they'll um, they'll have them play with like the under twenty ones or something like that for a match just to just to get some match fitness. That happens every once in a while. But yeah, mostly developmental league. Although they don't go by age. You know, so all the different levels aren't... Oh, this is the hit. Whereas the academy generally goes like under 12s. From basically almost every age, right? 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15. But instead of going by that, I mean, you can be whatever age and be at a number of different levels. But yeah, like I said, this, the succinct version is, is it's the academy system. Yeah, the Padres have moved that Ethan Sala, one of their top prospects, up to double A already. Cards in these packs are usually just non numbered with some inserts. I guess I could breeze through these a little bit more quickly. And these where we have no this is where we have numbered cards. There's Justin Verlander to ninety nine for the Mets. Frank Thomas to 75, that is for Nestor. And Nestor, she'll like it too, that particular card. Martin Perez, eight out of 25. Also for the Rangers. Behind Aaron Nola, we've got around the diamond, relic and autograph, Scott Rowland. Piece of the lumber and the autograph. And that is for, um, that is Cardinals, Scott Rowland. And that is also Hall of Famer, Scott Rowland. This year's Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer this year. Sixth ballot, 76.3% of the vote. Is he a Hall of Famer? I mean, he is. <laughs> Should he be? We got Bubba Thomas for the range. I think these are like uncirculated cards or something like that that end up in here, something like that. We got Steve Garvey. Uh, Bubba Thompson goes to Texas. That'll be Jeremy Olson. Steve Garvey goes to my Dodgers. That'll be for Ed P. We got a Levon Soto for the Halos. That'll be for Kenneth. Kenneth P. We got a Jackie Robinson Blue. A little color match there. 26 out of 75 for Ed and the Dodgers. We got an Alec Manoa. Blue Jays, D.Y. With the Blue Birds. And then Barry Larkin Orange. 19 out of 25 for Michael Stapleton and the Red Legs. All right, next box. So that was box four. Halfway through. All right, now Eric Hewson needs the Bednar Superfractor. That'd be nice. I don't think I've pulled a train whistle out of here, right? So 
Scott Rowland has a lifetime 281 batting average, 2,077 hits, 316 home runs, almost 1,300 runs batted in, seven-time All-Star, World Series champion in 06, did win the Rookie of the Year. I guess the eight gold gloves held. It's a pretty good fielder and a silver slugger. No, in pristine. I don't think I've got a train whistle out of five and under in pristine. Not yet, anyway. Yeah, so John's thinking maybe Roland's a tier four Hall of Famer, but gets invited to the dinner, table next to the door in the ladies' room. Right, he's not, he's not at the, he's not near the dais, right? You know? He, he's not he's not near the the main wedding party. He's not being seated with the parents or anything like that You know, he's definitely invited You know you're maybe getting Get five minutes with the couple maybe You're probably not invited to the after party Oh redemption All right, that's kind of where Scott Rowland is, I think. Okay, fair enough. Movie. Scott Rowland doesn't get a plus one, right? You can come, Scott, but you don't get a plus one. Sorry. I thought I saw. I, thought I saw like a redemption there, but it's like, there's no redemptions in that, those stacks. Yeah, poor Pete Rose. All right, we got Joe Maurer, orange, 12 out of 25. Twins, that'll be for Nestor. For the Brew Crew, we got Brian Kay and Cody Clements. Sean Gola and the fight and fills to 75. And from an upside down Pete Alonzo, congrats to someone you are due to receive a popular demand auto relic pink parallel. Maybe to 15? The base cards are in parallels number to 15. We got N. There can only be two teams with a city N. New York Met, New York Yankees. It's new M. A. R. I. N. A. N. O. Rivera. Woo! <laughs> Russell Thompson, dangerous. Nice one. What, James? Are you serious? Who's who's reporting this? Have they even done an MRI yet? Wow, ESPN and MLB Network just reported it. Victor Robles for Nestor in the Nationals. Jeez. There's Christopher Morell for Rex's Cubs. Jeff has the Cubs to 50. Wow. 
Here's Vlad Guerrero Jr., 28 out of 50. Ozzy Albies. For the Braves, that'll be for Matt. Alex Bregman to 75 for the Strohs, and that's for Howard. And Gabriel Moreno, Diamondbacks, 75. Jeez. That's crazy. Yeah, Angels just can't get a break, right? They just got Trout back. Now, I, you can still probably... You could you could probably still hit though, right? Right, Harper still hits. I think you could still hit. So if he was just a pitcher, if he was any other mortal, if he was just a pitcher, then that would be he would be out for a year, and that would. That would crush his free agency. Well, I think Harper had carried a. Uh, I think Harper carried a, a UCL and still hit. I don't know if I, I don't. Depending on the severity, I don't, I don't know if it'll actually hurt. Um, worse than whatever damage is already there. Obviously hitting a baseball is far less torque and strain on your elbow than, than throwing a baseball 100 miles per hour. All right, so as a hitter <laughs> and a potential pitcher, so instead of a $600 million, um, instead of a $600 million paycheck, Fine, Otani's like five hundred million dollars now. That's what I've always said. I always said that that either Otani at some point in his career is gonna have to choose one side or the other. Or yeah, move to move to closer. So you can manage his innings. You know, and it's just one inning that he can just go lights out on. Can you imagine him, you know, hitting a go-ahead home run in the top of the ninth and then closing it, closing it out? You know, road game, I guess. Go ahead, run the top of the ninth and then closing it out in the bottom of the ninth. Yeah, how would that work? Warming up? You'd have to work around his at-bats, I guess. Or you, maybe you pinch hit for him if you know you're, if he's batting in the eighth and you know. Yeah, I guess that would be weird. Maybe he's an opener then. Maybe he just does the first two innings. I don't know, that's, that's terrible news though. But at least we'll still be able to see him play. I, I I would imagine they'll still they'll still let him hit. Right. Maybe Elon can build a a tunnel underneath whatever team he signs for, and he can just run underneath there. Yeah, I've always, I've always kind of, I didn't think it would happen this year, but I always said that whatever team he signs a long-term deal with, you know, I think, uh, I think that team was probably going to be like, hey, listen, we have, we're, we have to also, before you sign this deal, we have to be clear about maybe an exit strategy 
on, you know, as you get older, how many, you know, you might have to pick one or you might have to have a serious conversation about picking just pitching or just hitting or changing how many innings you, you, you pitch. Oh, sorry. Just Corbin Carroll, rookie card, not numbered. Uh, Xander Bogarts to 99 for the Padres, and Walter and Luis Robert to 75. That's for the White Sox. Yeah, and Eric Hughes just got pushed up. I think, I mean, you know, not to be cruel, there's Goldie around the diamond jersey and autographed Cardinals. Nice, Frank Castle. But I think, uh, you know, I think the Dodgers are probably happy that the price tag's a little bit lower. All right, nice one, Cardinals. Frank Castle, Goldie. And we got Matt Libertor as well for Frank. And we got Cody Clements to 99. That's for the Phillies. That'll be for Sean G. We got Luis Robert Gold to uh, Nestor in the White Sox, 12 out of 50. For the Rocks, Brian Servin, rookie card for Duncan. Then we got Caleb Killian, rookie auto for the Cubbies, Jeff. And then for the O's, D.L. Hall, 26 out of 75. Um, starting pitchers are generally on a uh, generally on a four day rest rotation. They pitch four days rest and they pitch on the on the next fifth day. With Otani, they they gave him an extra rest day, so he he generally pitches every six days. He had some arm fatigue a couple weeks ago, so they skipped a starter, and he, he, he hits pretty much every day. So they rested him. And they skipped a start, maybe even two, or maybe one. And he had a start earlier today, and then he left after less than 30 pitches. Arm fatigue was the original. Uh, was the original, uh, you know, report, the early report. But. Yeah, it's, it'll be interesting to see how the free agent dominoes fall now. Maybe, you know, maybe a lot of people are stepping out of the Otani race, although, you know, people have to wait to see what the medicals turn out to be. But, I mean, he's obviously still valuable as a, uh, he's obviously still valuable as a hitter, you know what I mean? And might be even more valuable. I mean, think about the numbers now, how he's hitting. You know, so... So if he just focused on hitting, that could be kind of amazing. Maybe you can get him out in the field too. He's played a little outfield. I think he's a good he's a good fielder. He's 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 really fast. So he he could make he could probably end up being a good outfielder. If his pitching load becomes very uh, you know restricted. First base, maybe. Yeah, I agree, James. He's about to be 30 next year. Um, this will be a big risk wherever he goes. Byron Bucks and die cut. All right, which is which is why well, whenever this discussion crops up, here's Oswald Peraza at 75. I always talk about like, hey, so you know, 
a team that's signing him to a 10-year deal leading up to his year 40 season, I feel like there's got to be some something in the contract or some mutual agreement that, hey, by like age 35, we got to start talking about maybe you just sticking with one thing, pitching or just hitting, preferably just hitting. It's Matthew Libertor, purple to 99. Michael with the Tigers, Michael P. With the Tigers, you also get this Miguel Cabrera to 25 as well. Al Kaylin and Miggy. And we got Tory Hunter Twins around the diamond, jersey and autograph. That will be for Nestor and the Twins. Nice. Sixty four out of ninety nine. There's Ty France, nineteen out of fifty. Uh, that will be for uh, Seattle. That's going to go to Matt Pudge. It's Florida Marlins edition. That'll go to Miami DY. We got Josh Young. Nice. Rookie auto for Texas. That's going to go to Jeremy Olson. We got Matthew Libertor, 44 out of 75. That will be for Frank and the Cardinals. Justin Murnau, twins. That's going to be Nestor in Minnesota. And Michael Stefanik, rookie auto for the Angels. That'll be for Kenneth P. David thinking, does Otani make Hall of Fame? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he maybe he's in that Scott Rowland tier, maybe. Yeah, I think so. I, I Duncan, I mean, when you're talking about possibly a record, even now, you know, even with this UCL injury for Otani, if they're talking, you know, if he if he intends to continue to pitch. Yeah, I think they're going to have to to be a lot of conditions that are that are involved. I mean, as a hitter, just purely as a hitter, he's going to get paid a lot of money. Maybe not the crazy numbers that people were throwing around. But maybe this is a reality check. You know, maybe this is a reality check. For Otani, that it's like, listen, what you did for a couple years is really special, you know, and you, you've proved to the world that you've done, that, that this can be done, you know, maybe if Otani was, was turning 20 instead of 30, this might be something different, but, but yeah, maybe, maybe teams that are approaching him will be like, listen, we're going to, we're going to put a cap on, on you pitching. We want you to do it, but each year that goes by, we're, we're probably thinking less and less, you know? I mean, you can do unique things, right? With Otani, you can get creative. You can be like, hey, you only pitch the second half of the year in playoffs. That's it. Maybe you only pitch during the playoffs. You know, you can keep his arm kind of pitcher ready throughout the season, throwing bullpen and side sessions and maybe build him up in September, and then maybe you just pitch playoffs. So I think you can still get creative with Otani. I think Otani is going to still probably command a record-breaking contract. Especially if a team can get creative with how they're going to use him. And maybe that's what Otani is going to want to hear in the offseason. Teams that are, you know, teams that are like, hey, here's our plan for you. Right, yeah, I mean, I'm just saying if he does bullpen session, he just keeps the arm pitcher ready throughout the year, even though you're not pitching competitively. Almost like a four-month spring training or something like that. Just so you don't ramp it up from zero to 100, you know. I mean, they're, uh, just, I mean I'm just throwing things out there now, but 
You know, I, I, you got to think that there are a lot of smart baseball guys, smarter than a lot of us, who can kind of figure out how to deploy Otani. But like I said, maybe the, maybe that does sort of because people were talking, people were throwing out numbers like six hundred million, six hundred fifty million dollars. But that's with the assumption that he was going to do exactly this for the next ten years or something like that. You know, it had to be one or the other at some point. Kyle Stowers to twenty five. He does get Tommy John. He'll be out. At least two years. I don't, I, have, I, have, I don't know anyone who has had Tommy John that has been out two years, Rex. It's usually a a twelve month from surgery to rehab to coming back. It's about twelve months. Less if you're just hitting. Hideki Matsui to 75. So be say, yeah, Walker Bueller had his second Tommy John. It depends on what happens when they open up the elbow, too. When Walker Bueller went down with his second Tommy John, they opened up his elbow and they realized it wasn't as severe as they thought. They just need to clean out some, some bone dust and stuff like that. And Walker Bueller may come back September. They originally thought he wouldn't be ready to throw a baseball until, until like September, October, but he's been throwing bullpen sessions for like the last month. So he's like months ahead of schedule. There's Eddie Murray and Joe Musgrove around the diamond jersey and autograph. And the other thing is that you can still hit. So he won't he really won't be out. You know, per se. You can still get him on the field in different ways. There's Devin Williams for the Brew Crew. That'll be Brian K. It'll be Vlad Guerrero going, going, gone. Blue Jays, one out of twenty-five. We got Nick Prado Royals. That'll be for Jerry Bennington, thirty-four out of fifty. We got Michael Harris, twenty-nine out of seventy-five. Atlanta Braves, Matt. We got Mookie Betts. Nice for the Dodgers. That'll be for Ed P. And last but not least is Levon Soto for the Halos. Three out of 99. That's going to go to Kenneth. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do a quick little recap here. So pretty nice break. This pristine, sort of a longer break from all these packs involved, but but ultimately a lot of nice little eye candy. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Got Acuna Jr. Oh snap, die cut autograph is a lot of fun. Got the Corbin Burns. Vlad Guerrero Jr. going, going, gone to 25. That went to DY and the Blue Jays. It's a lot of fun insert autographs. Musgrove. Tory Hunter, some old school guys. Cody Clemens. Goldie Bregman. Vlad Guerrero Sr. Morel, Mariano, sign your cards. That was nice. And Scott rolling early on. And there you go, gang. Eight box, full case, pristine baseball. Pick your team two in the books. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with us. Uh, out of fives and under, get the train whistle, Duncan. Not out of 25s. That would be way too many. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.